All right, we are ready to go, Curtis. Amen. <laughs> We're just trying to get started here tonight, and it's good to see you guys in the audience and uh, all of the people at home on the Internet. We uh, are glad to have you. Beautiful day today, and God has blessed us with two good days in a row, temperature-wise, and uh, we just uh, uh, want to thank Him for that. But we want to pray tonight for our nation and for all those who are in need. Father, we just thank you tonight, God, and give you the praise that you are our great and our mighty God, and you're in charge. Lord, we, we have several things that there's need of, that people are, are hurting in different ways, God, and we just pray that, that you'll reach down and touch lives, minister needs, bring healing, God, bring deliverance, salvation, God, bring blessing and prosperity. And we pray for the United States of America, God, Lord, it's even beyond what we can think of to how to solve our problems. But God, we just put it in your hands. We pray that America will turn to you, God, repent of our sins and humble ourselves before you, God, that you may be able to take control. Lord, and bless us, God, we pray. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to read a uh, familiar portion of Scripture in Luke 18 about uh, an unjust judge. 18, verse 1, it says, And he spake... A parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and to faint not saying there was a certain in a city a certain judge which feared not God neither regarded man and there was a widow in that city and she came unto him saying avenge me of mine adversary and he would not for a while but afterwards he said within himself though I fear not God nor regard man yet because this widow troubleth me I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. I think he was saying she's wearing me out. I, I don't know how much more of this I can take. I'll give up and give in and let her have her way because she is wearing me out. Verse 6 says, The Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Amen. Praise God. I want to talk tonight about not giving up. You know, we, we face a lot of things in the world today where I know that in the time that we're living in, there's people that have just given up. Uh, they've given up on, will this thing ever, ever get back to normal? Will we ever be able to resume the lifestyle that we had before? And and uh, sometimes people just get so discouraged, and not just with that, but in life in general. Some through illnesses they have, maybe, uh, or something they're dealing with, and they, they just want to give up. Amen. But uh, heaven is made up full of people who never gave up, and uh, hell is made up of people who did. And that's, that's as simple as that. Heaven's made up of people who didn't give up, and hell's made up of people who did. Amen. And uh, so every day of our life, uh, we have the opportunity to fail or succeed every day. You get up in the morning and you can look at that day any way you want to. You can make up your mind that day that uh, uh, you're going to go out and you're going to do your job, you're going to get things done, or you can just give up before you ever start and never even attempt it. But uh, in the words of the Apostle Paul, you're very familiar with this, Philippians 3, 14. Paul said, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He said, I'm pressing towards. Anytime we, we use that word press, it means we're coming against some opposition. Uh, we have to push. We have to press. We have to keep on going, putting one foot in front of the other. And uh, that was Paul's attitude, that he was pressing towards the prize for the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He, there, there was a goal that he had set, and that's what he was going to do, and he was, he was continually pressing towards it. And that's what we have to do. You know, we have to... We have to look at it that way. We, we, we're in this race called life. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, run to win. Run to win this race. And uh, anytime you're running a race, there's going to be some opposition. There's going to be some difficulty. And uh, something's going to try to keep you from succeeding. Uh, but we need to get the attitude and get the mindset that we're going to run to win. We're going to press towards the mark. We're going to reach the prize. We're going to uh, get what God wants us to have. Amen. But uh, life is full of examples of, who peop of people who never gave up. And I, 
I, I'd like to think we're here tonight or amongst that group, not giving up. Amen. Uh, there's not a big crowd here tonight, uh, but we're having Wednesday night service. We're having Wednesday night service. We're not giving up. Amen. We're going to go ahead and, and my, our faith and our belief is we keep looking forward. We keep pressing on towards that prize uh, for the mark of the high calling of God, or for the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. We keep pressing on. But we read this story here that's very familiar to all of us, and uh, of the unjust, unjust judge and the persistent woman. Now, she was a woman, he was a man, he was a man of power, she was a woman of, of weakness. She didn't have a lot of means, but what she did have was the thought or the idea that if I keep on keeping on, someday he's going to give in and he's going to reward me the, the judgment against the, my adversary that I need to have. And, and if we will just keep on that, there may be something you're dealing with, some, uh, maybe some, uh, something you need to overcome, some problem in your life, and it just seems like you can't ever get beyond that. But I believe we'll keep on keeping on one day. God's going to take care of that for you. And there's so many examples in the Bible uh, of like that. In Mark chapter 2 and verse 2, we, we read the story of the, the paralytic man uh, who was carried by his four friends. And uh, he, he was paralyzed. Jesus was down the street in the house. And uh, now here's an amazing thing. Sometimes we need help uh, to be able to get what we need. We can't always do it by ourselves. And that's, that's a good thing about Christianity. We're not in this thing, thing alone. But we've got people that will walk with us. And this man was there. He was laying there on his bed. He was paralyzed. And uh, he had been that way for a long time. They... His friends heard that Jesus was in the house down the street. And so his friends came and picked him up and took him down there. Uh, you know, we can look at that a couple of different ways. We need to be that friend. You know, we need to look around us sometime. And there may be somebody you know that's given up. And by themselves, they're going to stay given up. They're going to stay in a condition of, of uh, despair and, uh, but if you can come along and encourage them, I picture this in my mind, his four friends came along and, and they said, hey, we're going to take you down to Jesus. He said, you know I can't go down there. You, you know that's beyond my capability. They said, no, we're going to help you. And how many people in their own mind, and oh, you know that I can't do that. But is there somebody out there that says, but we're going to help you. We're going to help you go where you can't go. We're going to help you do what you can't do. And they picked him up and they carried him down there. Uh, obstacle number one was simply that he couldn't walk, he couldn't get there. They said, we're going to take care of that obstacle. We're going to be your legs. We're going to be the one to carry you. And I think there's a message in this tonight. There's people out there that are needing help and simply by themselves they can't get there. But maybe you're the one that can go and be their legs for them, be their transportation. And so they pick him up and they carry him down there and everything's well and good till they get to the house and they realize there's absolutely no way that they're going to be able to get him in front of Jesus because there's just too many people there. And you know how people are and they're in a crowd and they, 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 want, they want their spot. They got there early, Black Friday, people get there uh, the day before to set up a tent and, and you think you're going to go by them and get in the front of the line. It's not going to happen. And I can imagine that was just about the scene. That we want to see Jesus too. And you come and you're coming late and you think that you're just going to enter right in beyond us and go see Jesus. Well, it's not going to happen. The devil will try everything he can to discourage you and to keep you from getting there. But his friends went around behind the house. They climbed up on the roof took the tile off the roof and let Jesus down right in the, or let him down right in the presence of Jesus. And you know the story that Jesus healed him. And I don't know, I, I can't remember where it said with, when he, once he healed him, did, did the man run out the front door and run over the people that wouldn't let him in? I don't know. It would have been an interesting thing to see. But anyway, he was healed. He jumped up and his legs and his arms and everything was strengthened. And he was able to do what he couldn't do because not him not giving up, but somebody else didn't give up for him. So there's a lot of things there that we can see that, and we know people, we know people uh, that are giving up. And the question is, what are we doing about it? Well, maybe they're so weak and so frail they can't do anything, but that doesn't keep you from doing something. It doesn't keep you from getting on the phone and calling them and encouraging them. And I say, I know that you're really going through some, some depression, but we're here for you. 
And that's something we need, we need to do. Amen. There are people who have never given up against gigantic odds. And we know the story I'm getting ready to tell right now about a little boy and a big giant. Amen. That's, that's, that is gigantic odds when we think of David and Goliath. David was, I don't know how tall he was. He was probably five foot six, five foot seven. Goliath, I believe, was about nine foot ten inches tall. And uh, the odds of this physical David defeating that physical giant were impossible. Now, did you notice the words I said? <laughs> physical. That physical David could not fe defeat that physical giant. But I like the idea as Christians tonight, we're not just physical beings. We're, we're spiritual beings. Right, Curtis? Amen. We don't attack our battles in the physical. Like I preached Sunday morning, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness in high places. And this is a spiritual battle too, because David by himself couldn't have done what he did. Amen. But when he came to the situation and all the odds were stacked up against him, he didn't give up. He said, you come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the God of the armies of Israel. Amen. I come to you with spiritual weapons. And that devil you've got to defeat, you're not going to defeat him with your physical ability. You're going to have to defeat him with your spiritual connection. I want to say that one again. You're not going to defeat him with your physical ability, but you're going to defeat him with your spiritual connection. And it doesn't matter who you are, what condition you're in, how tall you are, how old you are, anything else. You can have the same spiritual connection that anybody else does. Amen. And so we, we can take the example of David and Goliath and David slung that stone and God guided that, that rock and landed right, right in a little spot right there to where there wasn't any armor. And it was that rock that God guided that took him down. Amen. So David defeated a giant. And a lot of times the things that we come up against seem like giants in our life. They seem so big, uh, so impossible that uh, there's just no way we can ever, ever get it taken care of. I remember back, my goodness, it has been 35 or 40 years ago, I had a battle with a giant. And my battle was that I owed the Internal Revenue Service some money. And uh, uh, being a contractor, uh, sometimes you get in that shape when, when there's just not enough money to pay them all you need. And they were, I think they'd sent me a threatening letter. And uh, man, I just, it, was, it was concerning me. As a Christian, I can't use the word worry. We know I can't do that, but it was concerning me. And I went to work that morning. I was sitting out in front of the place I was working, and I had my Bible, and I, and I opened up to, I believe it's Psalms 37. And uh, as I just opened that up, and one of those times where you just open up the Bible, and you look, and what, what's it going to It says, fret not thyself over evildoers. Here I am fretting. And to me, the IRS was an evildoer. They were wanting to do me in. Amen. And that giant was bigger than, how am I ever going to get all the money paid to the IRS that I owe them? Amen. And you know what? God came through. God made a way. It didn't happen overnight, but God made a way for me to work through that to get them taken care of. Amen. And that was a giant in my life. And it, it was like I was a little bitty guy facing a great big thing, and there was no way I could do it. But it wasn't, again, my physical ability, but it was my spiritual connection. Amen. I think that's the thing we're going to think about tonight, our spiritual connection. That's where your victories are going to, going to come through. Amen. And we all have giants in our life from time to time. And, uh, but I like the idea that just like David the day after he defeated Goliath. Now, I want you to picture this in your mind. He, he could have come out on that same hillside where the past many days Goliath had been coming out on that hillside and threatening the armies of God and everybody shaking and trembling. But the next day, you know what? He came out. There was no giant. Amen? Praise God. That giant was gone. Amen. And if you keep on using your spiritual connection, you're going to come out one of these days and you're going to look out and that giant is going to be gone. Can you say hallelujah? Amen. I like the idea of the giant being gone. Amen. And it's connected through our prayer life. You know, uh, we, we, the, the ability to pray. 
is the ability to find an answer. There was a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We know them. We know their situation. And when they were getting ready to be thrown into the lion's den, uh, they already informed the king that their God would deliver them. And, and, and they didn't resist the people that were trying or into the, into the uh, fiery furnace. And they didn't resist. When the people come to grab them, to arrest them, to throw them in the fire, they did not re resist with their physical ability. But they made a connection with their spiritual relationship. And when they contacted God, God put everything okay. And they went into that fiery furnace. And they came out and not even a hair was singed. They didn't even smell like smoke. Daniel, when he went into the lion's den, it wasn't with his physical ability that he fought that circumstance. And we're fighting circumstances today. America is fighting circumstances today. And, and it, it's looking bleak. Man, it's looking rough, isn't it? I mean, we, we look like we're in a rough situation. Now, we can worry. We sure can. And we can fret. And we can just get in a, in a dismal, gloom attitude and say, oh, what are we going to do? Or we can just go to God and say, God, I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know this. My faith is in you. My future is in you. My tomorrow is in you. And God, you take care of the situation whichever way you want to. But regardless, I'm going to praise you, God. Regardless, I'm going to walk forth every day and have a, a smile on my face. And I'm going to glorify God. And I'm going to tell people about Jesus. Because it's my spiritual connection that's going to keep me uh, strong. We read on in the book of Acts when we find that Stephen, when he had been arrested for preaching the gospel, and they came against him and they, they began to stone him. Here again, Stephen did not resist. And he was laying there on the ground. They were throwing the stones at him. I wonder, I, I wonder, the Bible doesn't say. I wonder if he even felt the stoning. I just wonder. I, I'm going to almost say that God maybe put him in a state of unconsciousness. To where when that first rock hit him, he might have felt it. But then after that, he just drifted out of that physical being got his mind on heaven, amen, and uh, when they were stoning him, he looked up and said, Father, don't lay this to their charge. Don't, don't charge this against them. And he says, I see Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. In the middle of the stoning, he saw Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. I can believe that Stephen was just, man, whew, glory to God. It's just going to be a couple, couple of minutes, uh, uh, maybe three or four or five minutes at the most. I'm going to be out of here. Glory to God. I'm heading home, and I can see Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. He could have dwelt on those men that were standing around. He could have looked at every rock that hit him. He could have dealt with every problem that he was experiencing at that time. He could have thought, if I had just kept my mouth shut, I wouldn't be in this condition. But he had his mind on Jesus. I heard somebody tell me about a preacher that I, I knew that passed on years ago. And, and I don't, don't remember exactly what it was he was saying. But he said, what's the worst they can do to us? kill us and that's bad we leave this earthly body and we're in the presence of God and that's bad so the worst they can do us to us is actually the best thing that we'll, we'll ever experience walking out of this life walking into the spiritual life of God amen there was people who never gave up on healing and uh, I've, I've been healed of some things and some things I still carry on uh, sometimes it takes a process of time, and I, I'm uh, dealing with uh, one issue now, uh, but another issue I was dealing with, I've noticed over the past several days that I'm getting better at it. My, my walking, my back is actually, feels like it's getting better, and so I'm thanking God for that. Now, there's another issue that I'm, I'm dealing with, amen, and, but I'm not going to give up on either one of them. 
I, I actually am looking forward to, in the near future, regaining some strength that I haven't had for a few years, regaining some ability that I haven't had for a few years, and maybe start getting back to doing some things that I used to do. And I'm not giving up on that. I believe God is going to take care of that. Amen. There was a man in the Bible named Blind Bartimaeus. And the reason he was called Blind Bartimaeus was because he was blind. That didn't take too much uh, to figure that one out, did it? Amen. Everybody knew old blind Bartimaeus. He, he sat by the roadside there. He was, that, he was that old blind beggar down there shaking his cup, you know, and, and everybody, people walked by. And, hey, Bart, how you doing, buddy? How you doing? Throw a couple of pennies in his, in his cup. And uh, one day he had heard that Jesus was coming uh, down the road. Now, he might have been blind, but he wasn't dumb. And he might have been blind, but he, he, he had heard isn't that good that we have heard? We, we've heard about a man named Jesus. And Bartimaeus had heard about a man named Jesus. He had probably heard that he had raised one guy from the dead. He, he had cleansed some lepers of their leprosy. He had caused a crippled man to walk. And he'd also heard that there were some people who were healed of their blindness. And kind of down deep in his spirit, he said, you know what? I believe if Jesus has done that for other people, Jesus can do that for me. Can we say that again? Amen. If Jesus has done that for other people, Jesus can do that for me. Amen. And I'm not going to give up. Amen. Praise God. Not going to give up on my healing. Amen. I, I, I got a man here in the congregation tonight that I want to comment on. Curtis, we had to pick him up uh, in our car and bring him to church for a couple of years. All the time, Ray and I, or whoever was picking Curtis up, I believe in the mind of Curtis, mind was saying, I'm going to get a car. And I'm going to drive that car. And I'm going to bring myself to church. And you know what? He didn't give up. How'd you get here tonight, Curtis? He drove his pretty look, good looking little red car. First one here. Why? Because, glory to God. I'm about to get excited. He did not give up. Whatever your situation is, amen. Don't give up on your healing, amen. So blind Bartimaeus pushed his way through the crowd there. And all the crowd said, get back, Bartimaeus. Jesus doesn't want to hear you. Jesus wanted to hear Bartimaeus more than he wanted to hear those other people. Because Bartimaeus had something in him that was reaching out to Jesus. His reaching out with his faith. And you know the story that Jesus touched him and he healed him. And blind Bartimaeus wasn't blind anymore. Amen. He probably walked up to somebody and made a little bit of fun and said, Here, you, you want this cup? You can have it. I don't need it no more. Amen. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to go out and I'm going to give me a job. <laughs> Amen. And a job that I can see and a job that I can do. Amen. There was that woman with the issue of blood. My goodness. Had the issue of blood 12 years. We'd probably call it cancer or some kind of blood disease today. And uh, she had spent everything she had. And she had reached her end physically. I mean, she had really, really reached her end physically. When she heard Jesus was coming by, wanting to get to the crowd, she literally had to get down and crawl on the ground to get to him. And I believe with her last ounce of strength, she lunged out and she touched the hem of her, his garment. You know why? Because she said, I believe if I can touch him, mm, I can be made whole. Glory to God. I believe if I can touch him, I, I can be made whole. You know what I believe? If I can touch him, I can be made whole. Because what, what, did, what did Jesus say? Who touched me? Of course, his disciples, they said, Jesus, <laughs> got some news for you. There's all kinds of people touching you. I mean, the crowd is all, every, people are bumping into you. Uh, there had been uh, hundreds of people touched you. And he said, no, there was somebody touched me. Somebody went beyond that physical touch. And with their spirit and with their faith, they reached out and they touched me. And the woman was there and he looked down at her and said, well, what do you want? Oh, that I might be whole. What do you say? Your faith. Your faith has made you whole. You know, she didn't give up. She didn't give up. I, I, she was on the ground. Can you imagine what she had to do to get to Jesus? 
I, I, I don't know. I, she, but some way, she had to crawl through that crowd and get to Jesus to, to uh, touch him. Amen. Praise God. The church is filled. The marshal and his family have made it. All right. Good to see you guys. Amen. Praise God. And he never gave up, even at death. There's been people that have not even given up at death. Amen. You know the story I'm going to tell you about Lazarus. Jesus didn't give up. Lazarus' family did. The people around him did. Lazarus was four days dead. There's a saying we use, he's graveyard dead. When you're graveyard dead, you have gone beyond laying on the bed in the hospital. Uh, there, there's nobody standing over you with the shockers trying to bring you back. When, when you're graveyard dead, you're not in the ambulance on the way to the hospital. When, when you're graveyard dead, you've already been to the mortuary. They've already embalmed you. They've already dug the hole, put you in the ground, thrown the, thrown the dirt in all on the top of you. That's graveyard dead. You're not coming out of that. That's it. End of story. But Jesus didn't give up. I don't know what Lazarus was thinking. I don't know what Lazarus was thinking. But he was in that grave. And, but Jesus came, and just simply with his words, he called his name. Lazarus, Lazarus, come forth. I've heard a lot of preachers comment on that. It's all just speculation. But somebody said that it's a good thing he called out Lazarus' name if he had him. Everybody, glory to God, woo, everybody in that graveyard said, he's calling me, and they had got up, and they had came forth out of those graves, amen, and they didn't give up. Now, Jesus, when he died, hell shouted, he's dead. I can imagine Satan, when Jesus died on that cross and said, it is finished, I imagine the old devil said, all right, I've done it. I've done it. Amen. But then three days later, after they had put him in that tomb, I imagine even Satan heard this. He heard a rumble down deep in the ground. And the earth began to shake, and the rocks began to fall by the wayside. Amen. And he came out of that grave, because death couldn't hold him. Hell couldn't hold him. The grave couldn't hold him down. Amen. Even if you think you're at the place of death, don't give up. Because God's got a plan for you and for your life. Amen. I, I, I go back to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and I, I, I feel so strongly about this. The older I get, <laughs> I think the older we get, the less we are really striving to hold on to life. We, we, we want to hold on. We, we all love life because we got our family and everything like that. But the older we get, we also realize that, you know what? 10 years, 15 years, however many years, we are going to face death. And we're going to step out of here. <coughs> and that doesn't scare me. That does not scare me. It, it, it almost, if you talk about it, think about it enough, it gets a little exciting. Praise God. Man, God's got something prepared for us. Amen. So don't ever give up. Those are all biblical stories. But I want to tell you a couple of things here about a guy named Glenn Cunningham. I don't know if you remember him or not. He's a young boy in Kansas. He got burnt really badly. And he went to the doctor. And this was years ago, so didn't have all of the things they have today. And Glenn Cunningham went to the doctor. and Well, he was in the hospital. And Dr. Plain said, you'll never walk again. You are burnt so badly, you'll never walk again. Well, he got to where he could get out of the hospital and out there on his farm in Kansas. Now, I, I can picture that, that road, two barbed wire fences running down this gravel road to an old farmhouse. And they said, Glenn Cunningham, you'll never walk again. Well, one day, Glenn Cunningham, he was a young teenage boy, he got up and he, he, he tried to walk. And he kept trying and he kept trying and, kept, and he finally got to where he could walk. He said, I think if I can walk, I can run. And he got to where he could run, and then he got to where he could run a little faster, and he got to where he was a, a tremendous runner. He set the mile world record in the Olympics, a boy that they said would never walk again. Put your faith in God. Don't ever give up, no matter what your situation is. 
No matter how bad it may seem, don't ever give up. There's a guy named Thomas Edison. Some of you may have heard of him. I'm glad he didn't give up. I'm glad he didn't give up. He failed 10,000 times. They said he literally had 10,000 experiments to create the light bulb and didn't work. But his attitude was this. He said, I didn't fail 10,000 times. I just found 10,000 ways that it won't work. Huh? 10,000 ways that it won't work. Well, I'm going to try one more. One more. Praise God. We have lights in here tonight because a guy never gave up. This is a guy I know personally here. His name's Steve Oates. And uh, I, I met him when he was in the uh, uh, general headquarters of the Pentecost Church of God. And he was the general home missions director. And that, he, he climbed up. He's pretty, pretty high in the hierarchy of the Pentecost Church of God. And that's nice and it's okay, but it doesn't impress me anymore. The titles don't impress me. But anyway, he was a good guy. But before he achieved that level, he had had three churches in, uh, in Texas, and every one of them failed. One of them went bankrupt. They had to close the doors on the churches he pastored. He was that bad of a pastor. And I can't remember what it does. They actually kicked, took, pulled his license, kicked him out of the Pentecostal Church of God. But somehow he got, was able to get back into the uh, Pentecost Church of God. And then he went and started a little, little church in, uh, I can't, Fort Worth, I believe. He started a little church in Fort Worth, Texas. And he got a little building, a little storefront building, and then a little bit bigger storefront building. And then he went to an Albertson's, an old Albertson's grocery store. 57,000 square feet inside this grocery store. And he took that building and he turned it into a church as pastoring one of the largest churches in the Pentecost Church of God. It had everything you can think of. That guy had every reason to give up, every reason to throw in the towel, but he didn't. And he turned the church over to his brother-in-law, I believe it was, and he pastored a church, and then he became the, the bishop for, the, for uh, one of the Texas districts, and then he became the general home missions director. Because they said, you know, home missions, that's where we try to build churches and stuff like that locally. And I guess they said, if this guy can come out of that hole, if he can build a church when he shouldn't even be allowed to pastor a church, he's the guy we need to help others build the church. Amen. In 1999, there was a crippled man that entered the New York City Marathon. I'm not going to tell you he won first, okay? 26 miles, what I'm going to tell you is he, well, I don't know whether he ran it, he entered it, and he made it that 26 miles, and he crossed the finish line. Now, there's something in that right there. We're not all going to cross the finish line at the same speed. But if we'll make up our mind, we're not going to give up. We will cross that finish line. That right there is enough for me. Amen. Praise God. There's pastors that pastor bigger churches than I do. Bless their hearts. That's wonderful. There's pastors that pastor smaller ones than I do. That's not the issue. That we're all fighting that same battle. We're fighting against Satan. We're, we're moving forward with the message of Jesus Christ. And we're not giving up. Some may reach thousands. Some may reach hundreds of thousands. Some may reach just a few, but we don't need to give up. Amen. Some of us have been in a place where we thought that uh, you already went past the point of no return. Well, Jonah was such a man, he cried to God. I mean, Jonah had, had really passed the point of no return. He had, he had said no to God. He had ran from God. He had uh, uh, come to the place to where uh, he had uh, literally been thrown into the sea to die. A whale swallowed him up, and in the, in the belly of that fish, he cried out to God. In, in, in a place where you would not think God was even able to find him. And I like the words that describe it. Jonah said, out of the belly of hell. It, it was so bad. Anybody here ever feel like you been in hell? Amen. You ever, you ever feel like you're, you're, you reached the, the all-time low and there's no hope? And he said, out 
of the belly of hell, I cried unto God. And God heard him. It doesn't matter where you're at tonight. It doesn't matter how deep you may be. But with any ounce of strength you have, cry out to God. I wrote a little phrase here. Struggle if you must, but never give up. There's nothing wrong with struggling. Because struggling, if you're struggling, you're at least trying to move forward. When you lay limp and give up, that's when it's all over. So struggle if you must, but never give up. Amen. So there's a, a lot of people in all churches. There's a lot of people in Christianity that have had struggles. There is a, they say there's a lot of people that struggle with lust and pornography. There's books written by people that did that overcame it. They didn't give up. There's many, many people who the bottle was their best friend. The bottle was their best friend. But they overcame it. They, they, they never gave up. They never gave up. There was a lot of people that, there wasn't any food in the refrigerator, but they had plenty of drugs to stay high. But they're not there anymore. That was yesterday. That was the old life because they never, glory to God, they never gave up. There were those who walked out on their husband or wife and, and uh, but today there's a miracle taking place and they never gave up. Never gave up. Amen. There were, uh, there were a lot of people that uh, have suffered divorce. Is that your phone right? Somebody's phone, I thought it was my phone was ringing. <laughs> That's okay. There were people that have uh, suffered divorce, and it looked like it was absolutely over. I, I, I know of several cases at where uh, they had went through the divorce, and it was over. And they even went on, and after a period of time, God put them back together. Never, never gave up. Amen. You may have been stolen from, cheated on, and lied to. But uh, if you don't give up, God can help you through everything. Amen. People who have been guilty of child abuse, sp spousal abuse. Or here's one that you like. Just plain mean. Anybody ever meet anybody just plain mean? There's a couple guys out there like that. No, women are. Women aren't mean. No. <laughs> Praise God. Men are mean, and there's men out there that are just plain mean. And God has taken some mean people and turned them around. We look at the stories in the Bible. Uh, Saul of Tarsus is the main story. Amen. And uh, Saul was, I, I'm not going to say Saul was mean, because Saul thought what he was doing was right in the sight of God but wasn't. And God was able to change him and turn him around. And tonight, I just want to encourage everybody here. I want to encourage everybody on the internet that giving up is not an option for a child of God. Don't ever even think about giving up. There is an answer. There is a way. And what was that thing I was saying earlier? We're not going to win this battle by our physical ability. But we want to win it by our spiritual con connection. Amen. Amen. Glory. Can I say that again? I like that so much. I want to, we're not going to win this battle by our physical ability, but by our spiritual connection. And everybody's got that spiritual connection. All you got to do is call on the name of Jesus, and he'll hear you. And he'll bring you through it. In closing tonight, I, just, I want to pray. I just want to pray and thank God that we have an answer to all of our problems. Whether we're here in this sanctuary tonight, or whether you're at home, or whether you want to tell somebody, God is able to help you through your problems.
if you will never give up. Let's pray. Father, we come to you tonight, God, with praise and thanksgiving. We love you, Lord, with all of our heart, our soul, and our mind. It is our desire to serve you. It's our desire to represent you the best that we can. The devil wants to do things to try to tempt us and to, and to defeat us and to get us to fail. But God, we know that you're bigger than what he is. We know, God, that you're able to instill within each and every one of us the ability to rise above the circumstance, rise above the situation, and get our faith in you and reach out to you, God, with everything we have and call on the name of Jesus, and believe in our hearts. And God, you are able, Lord, to give us the strength and the ability to keep on keeping on, amen, that we will be victorious through this all. Amen. Father, if there's anybody tonight that's listening that's not saved, help them right now to call out on the name of Jesus, ask forgiveness of their sins, and believe in their heart that God will save them and change them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise tonight. Amen. For those of you who aren't here in the sanctuary, we started out with three. We have double that. Praise God in one service. Do you know what we can do if we double that every 15 minutes? Woo. Glory to God. We're not going to be able to get out of here. We're going to have to climb through the windows. Amen. Praise God. See you all Sunday morning at 1030 on the line. Be here with us Sunday school at 930. God bless you. We love you and appreciate you.